How fast does the Quasar Cannon travel? Super Earth scientists designed this weapon to pack a punch and today we're going to calculate the velocity of the Quasar Cannon using a graphical method. So in order to calculate the velocity of the Quasar projectile, I'm going to need its displacement. Now displacement just means how far the projectile has been displaced from its original position. Now Helldivers 2 has this really useful ping system which tells you how far away an object is in meters. Now being a Helldiver and a Super Earth Scientist is not easy because while you're conducting your field studies you often get interrupted. Now as we put in our displacement values we have to understand that in every experiment our measurements are not perfect and there will be errors and these errors will propagate, they will basically combine. We can see that the closest displacement that we can select is two meters. I'm not entirely sure if I actually class as starting at zero meters or if it's tagging me to the closest tile of the game. And as we can see, as we tag further and further away, no matter where I click within that three meter zone, it rounds down to three meters. So I've got around a one meter error there in my displacement already. And if I've got a one meter error in where my displacement is and I probably have a one meter error where I am. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm measuring a length, I'm going to add those two errors together for the 40 meters displacement reading. It could actually be between 38 and 42 meters, the actual true value at which my character is sat at. Now to fill in the rest of the table, of course, I'm going to take the time for each of these displacements and that's going to be in seconds. I then going to get the average of these times. The reason we have multiple repeats if we only take one measurement of the time, how do you know that measurement's not an anomaly? And by taking repeat measurements, you actually reduce that uncertainty in your time. We also have the error in the average time. We do have the random error from my judgment as to when the quasar reaches the displacement desired. And my judgment may not be the same every single time by a frame or two. So about that systematic error in the timer. I can only view the timer frame by frame. We can see that the timer increases in time in a range of 0 0.016 to 0 0.017 seconds. I don't know what the values are in between the frames for the time. So there's an error there from when I start the stopwatch and when I end the stopwatch. So my actual error in time is 0.034 seconds. In order to calculate the time, I went through the video frame by frame and then the frame it says overheat is when I start the timer. Now I then zoomed in on the video, the frame it got brighter, that's when I ended the timer and I calculated the difference between those two times. It was also fun to note that there seems to be a flash of light when the quasar cannon encounters an object and then a second flash when it actually explodes. Now all we need to do is to collect data as democratically as possible. Wait, so we're just gonna fast forward through the clip here and fill in the values that I got at every displacement and the repeats for time. I'm then going to calculate the average time by adding the three readings together and then dividing by three. Once I've got the average time, I then need to calculate the error in that average. Now, if you're doing an A-level in the UK, you simply take the range and divide by two to get that error in the average. And the range is the biggest measurement, take the smallest measurement. So in the first case, big take small, all our measurements take 0.100. So the error is 0.000 seconds. However, this bugs me because it tells me the uncertainty is 0.000 and that's not true. So I'm going to be using this formula here. Now I know some of you will be looking at a screen and getting really, really angry and tough. I'm not here to talk about that.
Doing the formula that I suggested before, we have here our error in the average time, of course still to three decimal places. Now transferring that displacement and the average time over into a graphing calculator, we can then plot with our labels on the axis the displacement in meters, the average times in second, and we get this lovely graph should look like a straight line graph. Now we need to draw a line of best fit and there are two rules. One, an equal number of points above and below the line and two, all points as close to the line as possible unless they're an anomaly. Here I've drawn the line. We're just going to ignore the numbers on the left for now. Now as you can see I'm circling that there's two points below the line, two points above the line and two roughly through it so we're all good and we're going to calculate the gradient so we're going to draw our gradient triangle if you've not drawn a gradient for a while well this is how to do it so you want your triangle to be at least three quarters of the line and then you're going to mark on the y-axis the numbers and then mark on the x-axis the numbers and then calculate the difference between those numbers and write it on the inside of the triangle and then do the gradient you do difference in y divided by the difference in x and we get a gradient of 1000 meters per second. Now because the gradient is distance divided by time, it's y over x, that gives us the velocity of the quasar cannon. Travelling at a thousand meters per second, no wonder it packs such a massive punch. We need to talk about the errors. Now the error in our time is 0.034 seconds, which means on the x-axis we draw a line to the right of 0.034 seconds and to the left 0.034 seconds. But the second point is to the right 0.035 seconds and to the left 0.035 seconds. We can also include the error bar for the displacement as well of 2 meters. Just zoom in for you because it's really small. Now to calculate the uncertainty in our velocity, usually I take a line of worst fit, which is the steepest line possible, that passes through all those error bars. I then find the gradient of that worst fit, take it away from the gradient from our line of best fit, and that gives us the error in our result, the error in our gradient, and our gradient was the velocity of the quasar cannon. However, this graphing calculator calculates the gradient of the steepest line and then minuses the gradient of the least steep line and then divides that number by 2 to get the error in the gradient. Now over here we can see that the gradient from the graphing calculator is 1096.1643 meters per second and the error that it calculated from using those two lines of worst fit is 618.36066 meters per second. Now all errors should have a maximum of two significant figures at A level so I'm going to round that to so 1096 plus or minus 620 meters per second and if we want that as a percentage then we take that 620 divide it by the 1096 and times by 100 and we get our final answer of 1096 meters per second plus or minus 56 percent which means that over half our answer could be uncertain which is not really great if i wanted to reduce that uncertainty i would need a much larger difference the reason it's so large is because the quasar cannon travels so quickly that the distances of 240 meters it's still hitting its target within in 0 0.272 seconds and considering its error is 0 0.038 seconds a large chunk of that value is the error we'd need a much larger distance to bring that uncertainty in the time down well i hope you've enjoyed the video i hope you enjoyed the physics of hell divers and until next time i've been joshy